Thank you for attending and participating in this uh, Sangha, the spiritual community. Thank you for all of your support, uh, not only through participation, but through your own practice by yourself and with Sangha. And also thank you for your financial help, financial support. We need it. We need it. We can't do this uh, without support, without Donna or generosity. Well, oh, please help. Thank you. The teacher can't be unfair. Now, if that doesn't bring up some questions from you, I don't know what in the hell will. I would even take it further. No one can be unfair. You can't be unfair to anyone else. No one can be unfair to you. If you think that's true, then you're all about blaming others for how you feel. Pardon me, I'll slow down a little bit so I don't get too irritated by the whole thing. I've just been watching this for a long time and keeping my mouth shut. I'm no longer going to do that. I want you to see what this is. Not manipulate it, change it, blame people for it, take people to court. I want you to see what it is. Please see what this is. <clears throat> of course the teacher can be unfair or they will appear that way. But if they're your teacher, then you should receive that as a teaching. I don't care what your thought patterns are around it. Receive it as a teaching. Otherwise, why even be a student if you're going to say, well, let's see, the one teaching he has is pretty good. I really like that one. I think I'll go along with that one. But this other teaching, uh, he's kind of off in the deep end there. I don't think I'll do that. That is not a spir uh, spiritual teacher. That is not a true teacher might be a very good relative teacher or teaching about geography or chemistry. When it comes to the spiritual path there, are, as you start to understand what this is, it begins to leave the relative situation of right and wrong, up and down, back and forth, and life and death. You can actually transcend the very life you are so very attached to and you think is you really you be, just because you have nerve endings. <clears throat> so does a raccoon. They're not wandering around thinking up stuff like you are. Or like I am. I wouldn't know about this if I hadn't been looking about this for a long, long time, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do. Then I met my teacher, and then I spent another 30 years not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do, but looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. I came to no conclusions. If you think you're going to come to a conclusion, then that's a misunderstanding. It's better than that. And as I've said before, it's worse than that. How is it better? You're liberated. There isn't anyone. But there's also no credential. There's no proof. There's no evidence. There's no other. There's no other. There's no self and there's no other. And everything you see is unreal. It is an illusion that all the parts of the illusion around you are fiercely fighting over and agreeing with and disagreeing with and blaming others and perpetuating the, the samsara that goes around and around and around and creates the war in Gaza out there, the war in Gaza here. Do it with your awareness. Don't do it with your thought process. If you need to uh, fix a broken piece of furniture, then of course you're going to have to think about it. Where the hell did Shoto put the damn drill? Big. Lost it. <laughs> well, I'm going to assign somebody to keep track of you and your drill. Probably be, will be you long. <laughs> You're pretty good at keeping track of things, aren't you? So I'll see if I can get him to help you. Thank you. I'll have to, I'll have to ask him personally, see if he's willing to put up with you. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so making a joke about it, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying with all sincerity that I can muster, please, anything that shows up, the only way you can see what the world is, as far as I know, it's the only way I could see what it is, is to be, have that be introduced to you by the teacher. The teacher has to show you what that is. And the way they show you what that is, is by showing you what that is, by being that world. 
by being that difficulty in the world that you think is wrong needs fixing or that difficulty in you that's wrong and needs to be cleared up or cleaned up. I'm not against cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm not against, uh, what is it, MD EMDR, is that it? I'm not against it. I'm just saying those are circular. They may help you for the rest of your life. You may go do that and totally clear things up for you and you'll be fine, but you're not done. You're coming back. So anything you've managed to look away from or cover up is coming back and it's not going to be easy. <clears throat> or perhaps it'll be a breeze and you'll think, <laughs> what was he talking about? <laughs> Always interesting if I do something goofy to see if anybody's smiling and see the people who get more sad. Does this look sad? <laughs> you making fun of me? <laughs> you can't find me. If you can find me, you can make fun of me. If you, make, if you can find me, then uh, you're also finding a self that's finding me. It's this dual. That is the illusion. That is why it's so incredibly hard to see this. This is why people will murder each other, kill each other, bash each other's brains in and, and murder children with a justification behind it of why they have to do that. Because otherwise, the, uh, this country or that country will see that they're weaklings and they'll come after them. But is anyone to blame? No. That's why it's so damn hard. That's why you can't do it out there with signs. Or you can't do it out there with with uh, Bradley fighting vehicles or automatic weapons. You can, they won't do it. It just adds to the duality, the confusion, the polarity. How do you do it? <laughs> Lose the war right here. And you may need the teacher to point that out to you, that you are at war with yourself. And you're hiding out from your own war. So the teacher may come up and hit you and say, how about that war? If the teacher can come up and hit you and get no reaction out of you, then maybe you've seen your true nature. Maybe there is no one there anymore. Maybe you've actually seen it. I'm not kidding you. Would you understand what I'm saying or not? Or can make some kind of a... a perception of what I'm saying? I don't know. That would be up to you. If you're not training your mind, if you're not spending a lot of time in the cushion, looking at the wall, looking at the floor, just watching the mind come and go without adding, subtracting, dividing. I shouldn't be thinking this. I should be thinking more of this. This and this and this and this and that. If you're, if you're caught up in the circularity, then probably that circularity is showing up in your everyday life. Is it wrong? No, not wrong. It's just part of relative truth dependent origination. It is done through awareness, not through thinking. Thinking is great for repairing furniture. <laughs> Working with things that are very pragmatic, practical, and can be kept track of. Like the wood shop. Tools in the wood shop. You can keep track of those. Can't you? No, you can't. <laughs> Has anybody been in the wood shop lately? How is it out there? <laughs> it's not out there? Not good. Yeah. And it's not that it it couldn't be arranged. It's just not. And that's because of uh, it's haphazard. And if it were my wood shop, it probably would be haphazard. I'm not very good at keeping things arranged. So therefore, I assign it to people. Or ask people. Yes, sir. She is on Bowie. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about if this is an all or nothing path. It sounds a little bit like you either have to have all of it, and if you have exceptions, then you can't have any of it. Say more. Um, what does he want to know fundamentally? How do we don't... Well, I guess that is really the question. Is it an all or nothing on the path? It's not even that. If you say it all or nothing, then you're right back to the polarity. You're, what you're doing is asking me a question where you're trapping me in a particular kind of answer, a yes or no answer. It's not that. 
Ask me what you want to know, and let me respond to that. It, in another direction, it would be, um, you said that if we have any exceptions, then we're, we probably shouldn't have you as a teacher. And those, Did I say that today? Yes. When did I say that? Three, Three minutes. minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> they, you shouldn't have me as a teacher? Then right. you're probably not a, you're probably not a student or that you're not oh, I take that back okay but I'm wondering about the the spontaneity of those the the d divisiveness really is beyond any say so uh, again please I was watching her pick his pocket and trying to figure out why she would do that right in public <laughs> so the the preferences are not something that can be decided upon it seems they are impulsive or, or arise right. impulsively yes so what are you saying about those impulses that bifurcate the path or evaluate the path i'm just saying that they if you believe your thoughts and you believe your emotions and so on if you buy into them uh if you just continue to act out of how you feel how you think then you'll continue to do that you continue to continue the circularity is what i'm saying but if you train your mind and watch what moves then over time this is different for everyone. You will eventually just watch what moves without joining it. Watch what moves without re refusing it and watch what moves without ignoring it. Very simply put. And it's very complicated the more you get into it because you, you find out more and more that you can't really control any of this. And that's quite disappointing to that part of the consciousness we call the ego. More? I sometimes feel like if we have those evaluations that somehow we're failing on the path. And wondering how we okay, can so i'll stop you there it is about being aware of the evaluations it's not about fixing anything correcting anything it's about being aware of it being aware that the evaluation is part of the situation the situation arises then there's an evaluation about it and do nothing with it that just it's just the first thing that happens is what happens and then there's the first thought about it or perception of it then that is still part of what's what is happening it's not separate from it it's just a perception of it but there's no it should be happening. It shouldn't be happening. There's no extra uh, elaborations going on more. I'm wondering about questioning the path. That <laughs> seems to be a part of the teachings throughout time that in Buddhism that it should be tried and tested. So how do we question the teacher? How do we question the path and the teachings? It's going to function differently with each person. And the teacher, if he, she, or they are a true teacher, and you've heard me say this before, what I mean is, not someone who uh, uh, holds up to some somebody's standard of enlightenment, because there are all kinds of standards or definitions of enlightenment. I think it's all a bunch of bullshit. I think there's only this, and there's no there's no con there's no concept that even comes even close to what this is. If you conceptualize anything, you started to cover it up, even though the the idea there is to endeavor to help someone or teach someone using the concept. More. So coming back to the question is how does one question, how does one evaluate or ex maybe examine what is being presented? By the teacher? By the teacher, the teaching, the sangha. Just receive it. And if you need to evaluate it, then that will show up on its own. Just, just receive it, receive it, receive it. As I say in the book study, I'm trying to help people, teach people uh, with this particular kind of study that it's a, not about the relative understanding or the intellectual, even though some people are very intellectual and are very good at understanding technically or intellectually or structurally or conceptually what the teachings are, and they should. But there are other people that come in and study and don't understand, and they leave. I've talked to many, countless people who uh, listen to the uh, teachings on Padmasambhava, our crazy wisdom, I don't understand this, I don't get this, I don't understand. I said, study it anyway. Study it anyway. You're not that kind of understanding that, that will arise is not the conceptual understanding of what you're reading about. More? I'm wondering about how we take our seat in the midst of the confusion without conforming to a standard. Don't set up the standard. Just take your seat. Is that a standard? I don't know. Okay, well, I don't know either. It's, it's so important to receive, and the ego mind will find some way to object to anything that it doesn't like, especially if there's some aspect of the consciousness 
that is uh, that we call the uh, self-centeredness that is still a subtle area of keep it, just shutting down and protecting that. If there's anything area any, any area in consciousness that is being protected, <clears throat> then uh, that would just it just it's self-validating. Well, of course, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to join a cult. You have to receive it. If you don't receive, then you can't receive the world. Re receiving the world, that's that's the that's the true teacher. But you have to receive it. Everything becomes a Buddha. Everything becomes a teacher. There's no agreeing, no disagreeing, and no shutting down. There's just you have all these nerve endings. What do they do? They receive. Sense of sense of uh, seeing doesn't produce sights. Sense of hearing doesn't produce sounds. You already know that. And sense of thinking does not produce thoughts. It just looks like it does. It seems that seems extremely convincing. Your thoughts and emotions and feelings. And then we reinforce it with a memory of what happened, what she said, what they said. Every one of you, including this person, we're doing this all the time. I've not stopped doing that. Nothing has happened. I just see what it is. Go ahead. She's on by. What is it to not receive? What could we investigate that would show up as not receiving? Again, please. Don't. What is not receiving? How do we look at it? Or what, what is it that is called not receiving? Not receiving is to, to add to anything that shows up. Any comment, any interpretation of anything, and the teaching person, if they're actually, if you're, if you're a student of a teaching person, at some point, maybe not the first three, four, or five years, but at some point, the teacher is going to increase your lessons, not because they're choosing to. It's just that because they're watching you, and they're the watching the way you're slowly getting better and better at shutting out things and and providing a more a uh, fluffy kind of person who's beginning to be more mindful, more kind, more loving, and more, more better. And if I'm there, I'm going after that with your permission. I have to have your permission. If you shut me out, you think, oh, this is too much for me. I, I, I can't do this anymore. Then I would say, go do something else. You've seen me do that. More, please. She is unbowing. Are you, is it... Are you saying that if you accept, reject, or ignore, there's you cannot receive? It's just part of the path because you have to be aware that you're just shutting down something. You're aware that you're pushing something away. You're aware that you're doing it. So you may have to, just the momentum of samsara and your karma may cause you to continue to function in a certain way. So the awareness eventually watches that. And this is where our humility begins to arise, where you see that you cannot be anything but confused. And you cannot be anything but self-centered. It's very painful to look at this, very embarrassing to realize how confused and self-centered and self-deceptive you are right in front of the teacher and the teacher's watching you. Not to mention all the other people that are watching, but their confusion is so strong. They're, they're probably not really clear about what's happening with you because they're so busy blaming you or putting things on you or accusing you and making things more stronger this way or weaker the other way more. I'm wondering about, again, those spontaneous accepting, rejecting, ignoring. It seems like those causes and conditions can't, they're beyond our control. They can't necessarily be snipped. So they may continue to express they may. indefinitely. That's true. And so I'm wondering about uh, on the path, receiving while simultaneously saying no or saying yes or looking away. It can be done. Is there a way we can work with the energy, the inertia of karma, and still be receiving that inertia. The word that I use all the time is return. You'll notice how you go away and you tip away from it. You start to solidify and tighten up and then just you know, return to the original inspiration to even do this path in the first place and just return to it. Return to what? Receive. Just receive what this is. And that means receive what's coming out there and receive in your own mind your reaction to it. Not being different from what's showing up because what's showing up out there and what you're producing with it are not separate from each other. And you have to just receive. If you're a receiver, then you you fall to the feet of the teacher over and over and over. Maybe not literally, but you realize that you have to receive this world without agreeing, without disagreeing, and without ignoring the passion and aggression and ignorance that have been 
talked about in the Buddha's Dharma for centuries. I have one more. And when you say you have to receive, um, that that can be very loaded as far as how we define what that looks like. Can you say how we can just receive as students of the path? What are you actually instructing to do? No matter what shows up, if you're a, if you're a practitioner, and you are, uh, whether you're fully ordained as a monk or lay ordained or just very committed to this path to understanding what the Buddha was pointing at and what this teacher is pointing at, if I happen to be your teacher, then receive it no matter what it is. Don't agree. That's hard. Don't disagree. That's difficult. And don't ignore it. And that way you will not know what it is you are doing. And this is this is when the boundary between this and that starts to come apart. And then it's terrifying to the ego. Ego does not want to be a nothing, a nobody, and not exist. Ego will get any kind of little scraps of otherness to continue to be somebody. And so the teacher is going to provide them to you, as he does to you. Anytime the teacher is watching you and seeing where you're slowly starting to hook up and grasp to that situation, uh, and I do this with several other people too, but with you it's really strong. And you know it. I come after you, and I'm very, very unfair with you, relatively. But ultimately, I, I nothing but love you. Strong. I want you to see what this is. And you might think, <laughs> so come on. I do see what this is. Haven't you heard me give Dharma talks? <laughs> of course. You're a wonderful Dharma teacher. I, th I really mean that. You're really good at presenting the, the, the Buddhist teaching, the Dharma teaching, very, very good at it, but you need to see what who you are fundamentally. Otherwise, you start to the ego starts to fuel itself off from that accomplishment of being a Dharma teacher and being able to right. really talk about the four noble truths, the eightfold path, the twelve links, and the chain of existence, the, the three realms, the six realms, the da 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 da, da on down into tantra and zogchen and mahamudra and on and on and on. You get we get so good at that. Some people are extremely good at that, and they have a little bit of difficulty if they run into me. Because I'm not as smart as they are, but I, I'm looking at what they're looking for. Go ahead. She is unbowing. There's a type of maintenance that I have noticed in my own practice, and I don't know if others have, but where we start to conform, we all start to look very similar and act and speak very similarly. There's an artificiality to it. At least it feels that the type of maintenance I do has an artificiality. And so when that starts to soften and the expressions of confusion start to actually have outflows the whole situation becomes much messier and so i'm wondering about as practitioners endeavoring to be aware is there any need to express that confusion in order to bring it into a more visible arena again it's, it's so situational that you can't really set up a standard for it but what you're asking about as i would say yes there are times when that is going to show up but watch the intention of the motivation behind any time you open your big gap or mine. Watch the intention behind that. If the intention is to uh, to promote uh, some sense of being right or correct, or you know, then just you might want to hold your horses a little bit. Is there a way to aerate that maintenance in a more subtle way? Very best thing I can say is do a lot of sitting meditation. That seems to be rather than have some kind of a modality that, you know, you might, if you read a tissue seven points of mind training, uh, you know, number 56 or something like that might give you some kind of a dynamic. I think some of those are very powerful. I think the ones that are ultimate teachings rather than the relative bodhicitta, I think those are powerful. Uh, remain a child of illusion. Those kinds seem to be kind of vague on the one hand, but yet are vague in a way that can be supported. Whereas some of the other ones where you're, trying to some, have some kind of strategy for dealing with things. Just like the four uh, uh, karmas is a strategy for dealing with relating with someone with some kind of strong negativity, pacify, enrich, magnetize, destroy. It's still just a way of manipulating things while you're you know, trying to be uh, keep from being murdered by your neighbor so that you can continue to practice more. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Well, Steve Allen, <clears throat> you've talked about, you've talked about taking responsibility for our feelings um 
who is taking responsibility and is taking responsibility different from receiving or how is it different? So same as receiving You're just just watching the emotions come and go being responsible means you don't you don't do anything with them you don't shut them down you don't push them away you don't blame anyone just responsible for your feelings and so yes it would just be receiving or observing the feelings come and go sometimes they get really difficult and rough and intense sometimes they back off they go this way but don't add a person to it but you can't when i say don't add a person just don't add anything to it because when you start to push on it it creates a, someone who's trying to stop that or someone who's trying to justify that or someone who 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 there so receive as much as you can kelsey Bank, how do we take how do we take responsibility without adding a person who is just just receive just receive and you will, you will not get a credential that you're no longer adding a person because that's that's more more personhood someone part of consciousness is not doing something someone is living up to some kind of a standard it's a very subtle form of duality uh and uh on the path it's it's more and more of a feeling of, of being a failure being a loss mundane path is about accomplishing getting better and doing better and being successful and but you're still going to die the Buddha Dharma is about impermanence, seeing impermanence. Anything that shows up is going away, including your emotions, positive, negative, and neutral. So, but that which uh, does not show up can't go anywhere because it has not appeared. It can't disappear. And that's consciousness. And if you identify with the body, mind as, as yourself uh, and your emotions and feelings as being you, I'm the one who's having these feelings, then you feel like you have to get rid of them or blame somebody. But, if, but I sometimes say it as directly as I can. If you realize your true nature, you don't care how you feel because you know you, your feelings are not yours. They don't belong to anyone. It's not that you don't have them. It's just that there's no person here anymore. So everything is welcome. Every single giraffe and monkey, every bird, every duck, every emotion, every feeling can come and go because there's no, there's no spaciousness. There's no locality here anymore simple way of putting something that is just about impossible to explain let alone direct someone to other than direct them this way this is the way i direct everybody you come to me and say where should i look right well, you're going to look here physically but here's where you're looking find out who this is don't get your identity from anyone including the teacher get your identity from yourself the teacher may just continue to try to turn you into yourself that will not be comfortable or with some people, they'll think, why is everybody having difficulty with the teacher? He's such a sweet guy. Well, probably not talking about me. But you know what I'm saying? I'm saying I meet people where they're at. It's not a bragging point. It's just that that's how it looks. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. What does it mean to receive a situation that looks unfair? Just, just notice that you're adding the unfairness to it. Unfairness doesn't arise of its own. That's, a, that's an idea about something. Anything that shows up is just its own. It's just paratantra. You know that concept. It's just dependently arisen. So, but what it is dependent on is impossible to find your trace. You'd have to find a tree that this came out of. And then you have to find the person that took this out of the tree. Carbon thing in it like this and then pulled it out of the tree and painted it and drilled a hole in it and then you'd have to find the hand that's holding it up and talking to you about it you can't find a location for anything a location is relative and it is part of the illusion and it's why it's so convincing that there is no hand there is no this does not exist fundamentally what does exist find out find out yourself anything you anything that happens other than what happens is something that we add as part of consciousness that is balled up into a knot of me and my stuff, my ideas, and it's identified with the body. Then it operates out of hope and fear, right and wrong. Should be and shouldn't be. Should have happened, shouldn't have happened. You, you know about it. You see it all the time. Everyone in here sees some version of that. And what I'm recommending you do is see it. Look here. See it here rather than out there. It's easy to find right and wrong everywhere. People make a lot of money locating right and wrong and taking people to court and all the other phantasmagoria, including taking people to war. Yes, sir. 
Jodo bowing. What you just said reminded me, waning says something like, I don't see the faults of others. I just see my faults. How do we see what we're seeing out there is our confusion? Bowing. Well, simply put, it comes down to there isn't any other. There's just there's just there's just this. And uh Wenang is probably just realizing that everywhere he looks, he sees himself. And there's no separate self, but he just sees consciousness only. And he is consciousness only, as are you, as are you, as are you, as are you, as am I. There are no separate beings. This is an illusion. When this all comes apart, when we all die, if you realize what this is, we all go. Uh, to, and so far as you go anywhere, because there's no locality, that the body drops away, but the consciousness does not go anywhere because it doesn't, you can't, you have to have a location in order to go somewhere. It has no location in time or space. Don't believe anything. I'm not here trying to be a scientist. I'm looking at it. I don't need proof of anything. I don't go later on and go and say, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that to them. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have yelled at Chazon. <clears throat> when I yelled at him here a couple of months ago. Remember that? Which time? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there might be other people that are, are have a similar kind of confusion, but are not ready for that kind of a teaching. They're not ready for me to become enraged at them. Am I enraged? No. No, I don't, I'm not enraged at anybody. I just don't want you to continue to suffer at lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And what I'm looking at is if you don't see what this is, you're going to be back again, being a baby in the southern Sudan. I'm not kidding you, and I'm not predicting your future. I'm just pointing out that we don't, once the body, once this protective relative structure of a human form is gone, the consciousness is, is goes back into the uh, incredibly complicated situation of the illusion of otherness and that illusion of otherness that is filled with passion aggression and ignorance will draw you this way or that way or this way or that way and you could come together with other consciousnesses that, that when they were alive had had identities find out this is an opportunity not because i'm so smart or i'm so right i'm not asking you to believe me or, or be a student of mine or anything but look within shut this Screen off, never come back here again, but spend the rest of your life. Look within, look within, look within. If you need help from me, I'd be happy to help you, but not without your permission. And I don't need any followers. I'm not going anywhere. Go ahead. Shoto bowing to use the example you brought up with my situation today about, about being messy. You've pointed that out for years. And you also say it's not about correcting that. So I see that I'm being messy. Why does the teacher continue to point that out then? Well, the teacher's messy too. You can't you can't just be somebody else. You have to be responsible or be who you are. You have to be that. That doesn't mean that seeing that you might not try to arrange things differently or keep keep better track of where you put your toothbrush or something like that. But some people are just naturally orderly. You could say, I mean, if you went into that psychologically, you'd say people just feel better if they can keep track of things. And other people, that's their way of feeling better is about just ignoring everything and just, you know, I'm all focused on, you know, um, what, what is that called when you tie little strings around pins and then you put it on a string and throw it in and try to catch fish? Mm -hmm. Fly tying, is that it? Yeah. So, but all the stuff that you use to make that is all scattered all over the house. Is that what you're talking about? You still doing that fly time? Good. What was your question? Shoto bowing. If it's not about changing what we're doing, why does the teacher continue to point out something? It's about being aware of it. You don't have to change anything. It's an astonishing realization. And it's not something you can convince somebody out of because most of the world, whether they're professionals uh, helping you in some way or your parents or your spouse or anything somebody wants you to change and be different if you feel like i'm trying to get you to be change change and be different and let me know where i said that or where i'm encouraging you to do that i might say don't add don't subtract don't divide but i know you can't do it but that brings your mind to seeing where you're pushing seeing where you're pulling seeing where you're shutting down more thank you 
Ilka Bowing, question from YouTube. F Bowing, what if these incoming feelings appear dominantly as avoidance, as freeze? So these are more than merely some emotion. You're going to have to speak louder, my friend. I can't hear you. What if these incoming feelings appear dominantly as avoidance, as freeze? So these are more than merely some emotion that shows up and disappears. Um, are these freeze emotions, do they have more grief? No, you're going to, you're going to, I'm not going to have a conversation with you. I can't, I can't do that, but I can respond to a question, but just give me, ask me what you want to know and I'll see if I can help you out a little bit. Maybe I can, maybe I can. Yoka Bowie, another question from Eric B. Uh, in Kalamazoo. Another question from somebody yeah. else? Yes. So you're just going to let him go? A is his name Asp? Aff. Oh, Aff. Left Athel, Athel Stan Spillhouse, that guy. Mm -hmm. All right. He's in the UK, so I may take a bet. Well, that explains it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I, uh, I don't mean to make it more difficult. Bowling, Eric said, I heard truth is the first casualty of war. Is this true? What should be done? Um, what do you think? Yes. Truth is the first casualty of war. Are you not thinking right now? No. Okay. I don't know. Any other questions? Yes, Juju. Juju Bowing, you said that this takes a lot of sitting. It might take more than just sitting an hour a day. Why does it take so much sitting? Because we've been spending, just to expand a little bit, we've been spending so much time shutting down on everything. Not not just in this life, but in just consciousness going way back, shutting down, shutting down, shutting down, disagreeing, using the body form as a living form to just shut out, block, control. And then we come back into this again, and then we continue to do that just through the just through uh, habit patterns that are just easier to go with the habit pattern of spinning and spinning and spinning rather than actually see the truth of your true nature, see what this is. So to sit still is to kind of kind of imitate. It's not it, but it's to imitate what consciousness is when it's not pushing, pulling, and shutting down. You sit down and you and you encourage this the observing part of the consciousness to just just watch the movement. Watch the way you push, watch the way you pull, aggression, passion, and watch the way you shut down or turn away or distract yourself into something else. As I sometimes say, if you I'll teach this a little, diff a little differently than I was taught because I'm doing it out of what I'm looking at rather than what somebody told me about. So if I say you're sitting there and you, you're having difficulty falling asleep, I say fall asleep. Don't argue with your body. It's about awareness. It's not about the accomplishment of sitting up and being all uh, um, living up to some kind of standard of very rigid kind of observer quality. Not helpful. That's more like uh, ignoring. So sitting a lot and noticing how it's how how you can't really maintain your awareness, and so you just return, return to ju you're just here. Smelling, tasting, touching, feeling, hearing, just just return to those sense fields that are unreceived, and get to know uh, the fundamental, simple aspect of being a living being, as consciousness shows up as a living form through these sense fields, and receives, receives, receives. So, mm -hmm. Bowing, does sitting cut through the habit energy? Uh, yes. It does just takes time and there's no one cutting we're not doing something like uh where you're forcing yourself to do uh, uh do this in a particular way or trying to accomplish something there are therapies that work that way that try to push you into understanding something not a good idea it fights back because it takes on a reality that resists 
whereas this uh, form is quite simple and it's uh it's very direct and it doesn't necessarily look for results at least the way i understand it you just watch what moves and add nothing to it if what if moving is negative feelings about somebody just watch them don't necessarily try to stop that so you don't have negative feelings that's ego Jujibowing, when there's intent, intense emotion, I often feel stuck between the impulse of uh, doing something with it, talking about it, or trying to release that pressure, and or the impulse of trying to hold it back so that I don't yes. outflow. Yes. What does receiving look like in the midst of that? It's a very good question. I can help you. That this is very hard to understand because we want to understand something by grasping it or understand something by rejecting it or possibly even understanding something by just saying it's impossible to see what that is. But the, you just talked about your awareness of two different directions that it was going. It's the awareness that sees that. It's like the awareness looks at a teeter-totter. It doesn't jump on one end. It just is aware of the duality. It doesn't confirm it <clears throat> or deny it, but the ego mind wants a reference point in order for the ego to actually be there or to be have some kind of uh, so-called validity. There, there has to be a right and a wrong, a correct or should be or shouldn't be. So, But just to watch the nebulousness of, of so-called right and wrong or uh, I can't remember how your description was, but you're feeling it. And then on the one hand, you want to express it or do something about it. On the other hand, you want to shut it down and stop it or turn away from it. Don't do anything. Just receive. Just feel that. On behalf of everyone, on behalf of the world, this is what the Bodhisattva Bhava is about. On behalf of others, give me all of the passion, aggression, and ignorance that's showing up. Here. I'll take all of that. I'll take all of that. So no one else has to suffer. Probably not going to happen. But it's the intention and the attitude that is powerful, not the accomplishment. This is not spiritual materialism. It is about awareness, awareness, awareness. You will never be a hero. More? Is receiving then feeling, could it feel like the tension or the stuckness between those? Yes. Just receive that, but you don't necessarily have to leave it for a definition like stuck or the definition uh, of any kind of uh, definition of it. Because as soon as you define it, then the, then the, 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 the opposition has been, has somehow congealed into something other than the opposition. And so therefore you've actually left the tension for some kind of security blanket that you know, at least I'm observing it kind of thing. As soon as you say that, you've actually left the awareness because the awareness itself is what, First noble truth, life is suffering. Yes, sir. Brian, mine. What is the difference between the emptiness of dependent origination and that experience at the brink of suicide? I didn't, didn't hear all of it. You want to repeat that, please? Brian, Thomas. What is the difference between the emptiness of dependent origination and the emptiness felt at the brink of suicide. The well, same thing. Not different. Don't do anything unless you have to. Just receive, 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 receive. You can't if you're on receive, you can't you can't commit suicide. If you're on receive, you can't come to any conclusion about it. You're too busy receiving, receiving, receiving. Just a practices to the path is to observe, and the and the path is to receive, and the fruition is to see there never was anything. There never was a receiver, and there never was anything received. To use very conceptual things that that miss the, the situation altogether. If you see what it is, you will have no credential. You won't, you won't sit in a position like this and think you know a bunch of things. But you will see what this is, and you'll see that there isn't anything but this. There isn't anything else. 
Everything out there is an illusion. It is empty of its apparent otherness. And it will not be a conclusion any more than fire is hot or water gets things wet, according to Ani. I haven't forgotten that instruction from Ani. Okay, Jishin, I think I'm ready for you now. Jishin Bowing. What does it mean to, exam to examine the teachings, Bowing? Well, let's just take a teaching. How about uh, the, everything is empty of what you think it is? So if we were looking at that, uh, to examine that uh, conceptually, it's a conceptual structure. And so everything is empty. Okay, so we think that uh, our emotions are um, real because we're having them. But if we hear the teaching that that very situation there is empty of uh, our validating of it, that it's our feeling, it's empty of that. It doesn't have that. The, the, that emotion itself is, is uh, self-existing. It's, de it's, uh, it's dependently arisen to some extent, but then in its, in its, uh, its fundamental situation, it's just self-existing. It has no connection with anything. So that's a, that's a, I'm just talking about it a little bit to say, say that, uh, that's a way of talking about it or examining it. You can talk about, this is why we get, get together and have book studies. Hopefully you'll be, do, you will be doing that in book studies, talking about this material, examining it together. And maybe I, uh, went a direction that you weren't asking about. Did I? Jishin Bowing, uh, I'm kind of following uh, Chazan's questions, which I found very helpful. Uh, so I'm wondering if examining the teachings is similar to questioning the, the teachings? Bowing. Well, to some extent, you're, you're, you're going to be questioning a lot. The first few years you practice, there's going to be a lot of questioning about the teachings. So some people get so far into it and read the first noble truth and say, well, I'm not interested in a religion of nihilism. Life of suffering. That's just, it's not always suffering. So that mean, that just means that you're, you're not ready to hear this. You're not ready to even consider uh, that someone might have said that based on, on really looking at the situation rather than just thinking about it or philosophizing. So you're not, just not ready to, to look at these teachings yet. Not wrong. It's just most of the world is not. Buddhism has been around for 2,500 years, and I don't know how many people are studying it, but not a lot. So can we, uh, thank you, so can we, um, questioning or examining the teachings and receiving at the same time, bowing? Somewhat. Somewhat. I'm just saying that... Uh, when you when you say questioning, I'm not saying you get to question, 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 question. It's not you're not in a court of law. There's not a bunch of standards there. There's just at some point the concepts that are pointing to the, the what the nature of what this is need to come apart so you can see that you do you do you need to do this with your awareness, not with your thought process, which is very very polarized. Thinking process is very important. Fourth skanda, we need it. You can't build a house. You can't carry out the garbage. You, you can't do any simple thing without a certain amount of thinking going on. So it's very necessary to have that. But when you start to use the thinking process to understand your true nature, it goes a little ways. But at some point, that has to come apart and give way to perception only, to just receive. No comment, no elaboration, just receive. If you just receive what is in front of you, then you will not know what it is conceptually. Yes, you might know it's a piece of wood, but that's that's in the background of what it is. What it, what is this? What is the great mystery that this is? What is the great mystery of life and death? Here we are, all alive. This will not last. What does it say on my cup? Death is coming. And then there's a bunch of rainbows and kids dancing. But it's true. We're all going to pass pretty soon. Maybe in 20 years. Maybe sooner. Maybe later. So, but we have some time to see what this is. 
you can spend your life building a fortune. Good, go do that. Maybe you need to do that. Some people are doing that is not incorrect. They're living out of what they understand and they should. But if you're here, you're listening to me, I would say, find out who you are. So that that which you believe you are, so you see what this is and you see that who you actually are can't die. But this is a lie. Death may be coming, but it's an illusion. And do I believe that I won't die? No, that's that's more illusion. There isn't anyone. There's no separate being anywhere. Realize it. You don't have to fight with yourself and your world and your parents and your dog the rest of your life. You don't have to do that. But you can't really stop it based on more relative truth. You have to see what it is. So then the warfare just stops. This is why it may be necessary for you to uh, come face to face with a teacher. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Senshu, one of Sokuzan's monks. Sokuzan offers his wisdom tirelessly with complete love and devotion. If you value these teachings, Sokuzan, the mandala of Sokukoji, please consider donating at sokukoji.org. Thank you.